<laughs> All right. Now we're here at Astronaut Adventures with the most famous analog astronaut in the entire world. I cannot tell you how excited I am to say that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my great friend, Dr. Cyan Proctor. Hi, everybody. It's really great to be here and to talk to you, Mike. You're, you're the first guest on Astronaut Adventure. You're our first Yay. guest ever. Yay! I'm so excited to be here. Thank I'm you. glad to be here to share all of my adventures with everybody. Yeah, your adventures are awesome. You, you, you really do. You are one of the people alive that I know of whose adventures at least match my own. Your adventures are at least as good as mine. Oh, thanks, Mike. You know, uh, I think part of that is just having that explorer at heart, wanting to get out and, and just find the answers and learn about all kinds of things that the world has to offer. Cool. So I got, I got a couple of questions for you. First of all, I want people to make sure that so they can Google you later. Cyan, S-I-A-N, Proctor. Oh, wait, I forgot something really important. I got this. I got this. I love to write. Everybody knows. <laughs> I love my whiteboard so much. It is Dr. Cyan Proctor. Dr. Cyan Proctor. So are you a medical doctor? No, I am a PhD doctor. That means that I spent a lot of time going to school learning how to teach other people about science and science education and what we call STEAM, science, technology, engineering, the arts, and mathematics. So Dr. Cyan Proctor, world famous analog astronaut. Now, That's what, correct. Is, what does analog mean? Analog means it is a, it's analogous or similar to something else. And so you can think of when we talk about Mars and exploring Mars and the terrain of Mars, well, are there similar terrains here on Earth? And if we can find a match of a Mars terrain to an Earth terrain, we call the Earth terrain an analog to Mars. And so in space exploration, we're always looking for analogs to things that we see in our solar system, but here on Earth. So we can test those things. So you get to go on these analog astronaut missions to test what it would be like to go on a, a, a Mars mission? That's correct. And so I like to live in moon and Mars habitats in locations that are very Mars-like. And so I lived in one called the High Seas Habitat, and I have a 3D model of it here. And so it was a, it's a geodesic dome like this, and I've got a picture of it in real life. Can you see that? Oh, I was gonna, it looked really small. I was wondering how you fit in it. So it's actually really big. It is actually really big, big enough to hold six people. So me and five crewmates. And so we lived in that dome for four months. But what's, what's awesome about it is that the terrain is very Mars-like, volcanic, red, just awesome. Did you wear astronaut uniforms when you went outside? I got to wear a spacesuit. And so oh. you can see my spacesuit back here. Wow. And I have my two space explorers. They come with me whenever I go on an analog mission. These are my Astro Bears. And so this is Ursa Minor, and this is Sally, Sally Bear. And so I take them with me when I go to live in these moon and Mars simulations. You're allowed to take that kind of stuff with you? Yes, because one of the things is when you're going away from home to do these kinds of things, and even astronauts, you want to bring some personal stuff that reminds you of home, that makes you still connected to the people you love and the things that you love back on Earth. Did you ever get homesick on your analog astronaut missions? Sure. I mean, everybody gets a little bit of homesick, but that's why we bring things that help us cope and really keep us connected to our family and friends back home. So one of the things, Dr. Proctor, one of the things that I have been teaching and communicating with students right now is that this quarantine that we're in because of the global pandemic is a, it parallels, it's like an analog to space mission training. How do you feel about that? 
I absolutely agree. It is the same kind of thing that I experienced by living in the high seas habitat. You know, when we can't go outside and do some of the things that we normally do where we're in restricted environments for whatever reason, whether it's being in a spacecraft and a hostility of space or being on a ship in the ocean or living in a habitat like I did in the high seas habitat or living in your house and figuring out how to not only survive but thrive while living in quarantine. What's the difference between surviving and thriving? Will, good question. Surviving is getting the basic needs met. So do you have enough water? Do you have food? Do you have air? Do you have shelter? Some of those things that we basically need to survive as a human. Now, if we want to thrive, though, we have to have things like community, and we have to have some things that help us connect with people, and we want to make sure that we're happy, right? And so things like this help with thriving because it helps connect me with home. Books that I bring, um, being able to email or chat with family, do virtual things with people like you, friends of mine. And so these are the things that help us thrive in this type of environment. You, you know what helps me thrive? What? Dark chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's my tea. And so I have my tea this morning. And th I actually have a mug where we first met. This is Space Vision. And so those of you who are listening, I met Mike seven years ago at a conference all about space. For students. For students specifically, yes. The, the SEDS Space Vision Conference, which they have every year for college students. So high school, they have high school chapters of SEDS, the students yes. for the exploration and development of space. And then every year at SEDS puts on the Space Vision Conference that you and I met at, at Purdue University, where Neil Armstrong went to engineering school. That's correct. And so, so it, there's many ways for students get, to, get, to get connected to space. I, I, uh, I, this, this is making me laugh because it reminds me of a couple of different things. One, it reminds me that um, I love coffee. <laughs> because you do love we, coffee. We had, co we had coffee in, together <laughs> in, in, at uh, that conference. And the other thing it reminds me is that you, that was when you first told me the story of your dad meeting Neil Armstrong. So now I got, I have a question for you because yes. you, to do all these amazing missions, you must have been born rich and famous. No, not at all. In fact, neither of my parents had college degrees. And so, but my father always had a love of science and mathematics and believed in the power of education and making connections and just working with people and as a result he got hired by nasa when he was really young in his early 20s to help track satellites and spacecraft and so he ended up working for nasa for the apollo missions from i would say gemini through apollo 13 on the island of guam wait a minute guam is? you weren't born at cape canaveral no i was born on guam so you weren't even born by a space, a space location. Your parents weren't rich and famous, and you are still the most famous analog astronaut in the world? That's How correct. How did you do that? Well, one of the things is that what was cool is that my father, they had a tracking station on Guam. And that was, so what you think about the earth, and so when we send spacecraft up and it, those spacecraft go around the earth, we have to have tracking stations all around so that we could monitor where that craft is and keep communication. So my father worked on that. And so I feel very fortunate that my father had this space history that I got instilled with at a young age. And my, my parents were always very supportive of me wanting to build model airplanes. Um, even now, I still, as an adult, I love to build things. So I have my Lego spaceship here with Sally Ride and a salute to women in space. Wow. And I have a big one that my brother just sent me, a big Saturn V that I haven't built I yet. I have that. Yes, I, have I that. can't wait. Have you built it yet? 
So my friend Andy, our friend Andy Hatch has that and he built the whole thing. Yes. And so I'm excited to take on that challenge. And so thinking about um, just my love of space and continuing to have it all around me and, you know, the things that my father instilled in me. Wow. That's terrific. That is awesome. So anybody could, anybody could get a job in space. Anybody can go. How many years of college did you do? Oh, yeah. Anybody can get a job in space in any area. And that's what's great about it is because as we start to develop even more in space, we're going to need everything there, like you know. And for me, I, you know, I got my undergrad degree. For, took me four years. I have a bachelor's in science in environmental science. So I love looking at our environment. And then I went to Arizona State University to get my master's in geology. So it took me four years to get my master's in geology. And that's, yep, so now I'm up to eight years, right? And so that's all about the physical properties on earth. It's also the environment. So think about historical geology and dinosaurs and how the earth evolved. That's what I learned as a geologist. Now, what I love about getting my master's degree, it was the best decision ever, is because it got me my job. It got me my job as a teacher at a community college where I teach geology even to this day. Mm. And so while I was going and working at the community college, I decided to get my PhD and become Dr. Proctor. And that took me eight years. And the reason why is because I worked full time, but boy, it was worth it because after those eight years, I became Dr. Proctor and nobody can ever take that away from me. Wait, that's 16 years of college. That's 16 years of higher education and it was worth it. You must have started when you were 16 years old. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, I, I have, so there was one question. What was it that came to my mind? Oh, I remember none of those subjects that you studied were astronautics. So you, no. study, so you can be an astronaut without, be, without studying astronautics? Yes, you can. That's what's great about it. And so if you love science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, it doesn't matter what area you go into for that, you can become an astronaut or in space. Now, even if you're like art, art and space go together too. So anything you can think of, you can use that in space. Our friend Nicole Stott, the astronaut, she rode on the space shuttle and she's been at the International Space Station several times and she is a big proponent of space art. She, she made, you know that she made the first space art astronaut uniform. Yes, she did. And so she's so fantastic. And yep. that's one of the things that is really, if you want to be an explorer, you need to be well-rounded. And so understanding some of the science and technology, but also the art and music of our world, poetry, things like that. You were just mentioning that Leland Melvin, a good friend of ours, wrote a poem recently. He read it. Read it. He read a poem. For Earth yes. Day. Oh, for Earth Day. I haven't seen it yet. I can't wait to watch it. You know, when I lived in the high seas habitat for four months, I lived in this dome for four months, I gave myself a poetry challenge. And I wrote a different po uh, type of poem like every week. And so I have a whole set of poems that I wrote as a challenge to myself. And so those are the kinds of things of combining space and the science and the technology and all that stuff with the art and the language of and the culture of humans. I'll put some of the links to the stuff we're talking about in the show notes. And, I, I, and hopefully we'll get a chance to talk again. Yes, I definitely would love to come on again. And maybe I can share one of my original poems or even talk about food and space, space food. food with you. Yes. Oh, I got to show you one thing. Uh, our friend Paul Minta got me this for my own analog astronaut adventure. Oh, that's fantastic. I love it. Now you've got your space helmet. Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty it's pretty simple to do an analog adventure now that we're in the pandemic. And, it absolutely is. And nobody knows better than you. 
<laughs> well, those are the things that, so for everybody listening out there, learning to adapt to your environment and be resilient is all about being an analog astronaut and regular astronaut going up into space. That's, that's great advice. I really appreciate your time, Dr. Proctor. Cyan, you're one of my best friends. Thank you. <laughs> Same to you, Mike. And thanks, everybody, for listening. Can't wait to be back again. Okay, talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I loved it. I can't wait to do another one. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about all food next time. Thank yeah. you. I, I would really just it letting, I got a message from someone in, uh, in Tunisia today that like, can I write a letter? From, yes. From I loved your letter writing. Oh, I thought thank that was you. great. Thank you. Yes. And I was like, yeah, yeah and yeah, I can yeah. show you my like my space memorabilia one of these times, and we can do a bunch of stuff when you have me on again. Those two, the Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, the two, yeah. the mascots, those are awesome. I love them. They're they, my they, favorite. They, they travel with me. <laughs> and it, 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 it so, lets students know they can bring their toys with them to space. Yes, absolutely. I'm a big fan of that. And I'm actually working on a new children's book starring do, 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 Ursa Minor. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. And so, well, any way I can help with that, let me know, of course. I will. When I get it done, I'll share it with you. Oh, oh we so, re you know what we really need to do, though? Knock out your website. Oh, it, I, I, you know, I just posted the new version. Dr. Cyan Proctor, all of my links should go to the new updated okay, website. Cool. I worked okay. on it all day yesterday. <laughs> So I killed the, the, the blogger page. It's officially killed. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Milady. <laughs> what, which platform did you use? Uh, it's on Bluehost because somebody had already developed it for me, which is a oh, WordPress. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. And so I just kind of went in and started modifying. It still needs work. It's not perfect, but um, I'm going to start blogging there and doing write-ups and stuff like that. So it definitely still needs to be tweaked and updated. Instead, in, instead of blogging at your website, uh, I would recommend blogging on a platform like Medium. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it, it advances, it leads people to your website and it, it does good things for your search engine. Oh, okay, okay, that's good to hear. And cool. so is, I will look into that. That's on my to-do list. I have to get going. I, I got a jam-packed day. Um, I've got another meeting I've got to prepare for that's happening soon. But I'm, I'm glad we could get this in. You're the best. You, you doing good? Oh, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I have you on my Space Snacks show? Have you seen my Space Snacks? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen an episode? I haven't seen a full episode yet. Yeah, but it's been fun. It's Facebook Live, and we just talk about space and food. Oh, I did watch a full episode. It was awesome. It was with, a, oh, God, I love her. It, Sha, 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 Shonda? Shonda, yeah, Shonda, Pandy. Shonda, I Pandy. love her. Yeah, and I so mean, I did. I mean, between me and you, she has the most beautiful smile, my God. <laughs> She's great. God, and so I've become friends with her. And then there is, uh, I did Tanya Harrison the other day. I done Ron Sparkman. Um, Who's Ron Sparkman? Ron Sparkman is like the Mars Society. He had Neil deGrasse Tyson on the other day. He, he runs Stardom on, he's big time. And so you should follow him. He's nice. His name he's, all the time. We, huh? I, I, we're think, I think him and me are friends on Facebook. Yeah, he? he's worth following. He does. Okay. Facebook Live all the time. He does solar system stuff where he has people plugged into different telescopes around the world. He does some off the hook stuff. Cool. All yeah. right, I'll let you go. Okay, bye. Thank you, bye. <laughs>